Hey guys, this is Neon Nezi, back again with another Destiny Knights video. Today we are going to be talking about the units that are in rotation right now, which are, um, crap, what are they? Um, <laughs> the Rock, the the Rock and Scissor Mashia, and then the Paper and Scissor Gunter. So, before we get started, I just wanted to tell you guys that the shop has been super good recently at giving a really good crest. I'm guessing you guys need to be at a high level for this, or or maybe not. Um, but yeah, every now and then I'll see I'll see a a crest that's like three or four stars with five five or more percent of the original substat. Let's see. I don't I don't want to waste too much here, but let's see if we can get one. Nope. Nope. Uh, flat, 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 like this right here, this is 4%, right? If this was 5% or more, I would buy it because that's a really, really good investment in my opinion. Uh, before we move on, uh, there's just one question that I wanted to talk about. Um, crap. Let me just pull it up real quick, guys. It's a question regarding, um, it's a question regarding the secret dungeon. Uh, I'm going to butcher his name now. It's from Gojira no, Gojira no Kyokai. Gorija no Kyokai. Gojira no Kyokai. I th did I say that right? I have no idea. He he basically uh, says, um, you know, like I was wondering if you can explain the mechanics behind the, behind the secret dungeons. Is there any reason to run them aside from getting fragments for the best three or four stars heroes that you can have? Also, every now and then, he told me that he gets the entire hero by mail, even when he doesn't have the total number of fragments needed. And we're just hoping that I could explain it to him and maybe other people that have similar questions. And he also thanked me in advance. So he thanked me in advance, guys. I'm sorry, but I but I but I have to answer. Like it's just it's just how it works. So <laughs> so to answer your question, um, yeah, the the main reason to do secret dungeons is simply to get the best four star or three star unit or really useful three or four star units. Another reason why I do them even once I get the unit is to get is for skill ups. Especially for three star units, it's so easy to skill them up if you have a if you have a secret dungeon for that unit open. And also it can also be used for fodder. You know, like four star units for fodder, that's actually pretty those are pretty useful, you know, like you have a Soho completely max skill and you don't need any more Sohos, but you have a Soho secret dungeon, farm it, get that four star four fodder, helps helps you out, makes life so much more easier when you're trying to um, evolve things. Um, yeah, oh, and the reason why you sometimes get the hero instead of the fragments is because there is actually a very small percent of chance that you might get the hero. It's a very small percent chance, you have to be very lucky, it's all RNG. But every now and then you'll get the entire hero instead of the fragment via mail. It's just how it works. So, without further ado, I hope I didn't uh, spend too much time on that. And let's get straight ahead to the talking about these units. So, Shias, I just want to say they both are super useful. All right, a lot of heroes like one of them is good, and their counterpart isn't like isn't too great. No, both Mashias are great. Sister Mashia, in my opinion, is the most reliable bleeder, and her sister Rock Mashia is probably the most reliable chiller in the game. So, her first ability uh, will give her special attacks for 10 seconds. That goes up to 15 seconds at max skill, cooldown of 36 at max skill. I would recommend you guys bring this up to at least level 4, because at level 5, all that happens is you just, you just get a damage increase, alright? This skill also boosts critical damage, um, and every time you crit the target, you will make them bleed for 15.5 seconds. Insane. Don't need to worry about res res resistance check, just crit. If you crit, you bleed. It's like, if you can crit, it can bleed. Um, that didn't really sound as... Awesome, I thought it was gonna sound. Never mind. Um, second ability, Frigid Spear. Honestly, you, I I don't think I max skilled this. I don't think I would like if you guys are low on on evolution. I mean, um, on skilled dragoons, or you guys don't have enough like repeat Mashias to feed into her. I really wouldn't worry about skill too. But if you guys want, I would suggest you take this up to at least level four, level five if you guys want max out damage, leader skill. 
Um, you know, it's just... Leader skill is just attack. Striker position, I would never put in a striker position. Always use her in the core three. That's that's just how I see it. I'll show you guys the build. on. I'll tell you guys how to build them right after I do Mashia, all right? So Mashia, her first ability is Ice Pinwheel. This, she's a defense type unit, by the way. So if you guys want to maximize defense, you guys are going to have to give her some defense main stats and substats. She has a 12% chance to stun. This goes with a 14% chance. The cooldown gets reduced by 5%. Breakpoint goes up to 2. Uh, gold goes to 3, actually. And again, for utility purposes, take it up to level 4. For damage purposes, take it up to level 5. Um, this thing has a 20% chance to create a shield. I don't think the shield works when you don't hit anything. Like, you need to hit something, and then you have a 20% chance to actually cast the shield that can freeze the attacker. Um, okay, then we have Snow Foxes, which is by far her best uh, skill. It's probably one of the best skills in the game when it comes to crowd control. I use her in Arena. I recently did a video on her. And this is by far the best chiller when it comes to Wyvernus faction boss. Check it out. Random attack by 20% which really doesn't matter, or by 200% of defense, which really do doesn't matter because during the Wyvernish boss, there's only one unit. So as random as you can be, how random can you get when there's only one target? You can't, right? All of them are going to go into that one target. And sometimes uh, Paper Eve will spawn up, but then this thing will hit the Paper Eve and it'll actually take her out for me because mine, mine packs enough damage. Um, this is an amp skill. So every amp you guys do, Every amp uh, you guys do will actually have two more snow foxes to give. I think at max, you guys have three. Or maybe, I think you have three. Or six, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you have six ice foxes um, that can that can land on the target. Each one has 20% chance to silence and 20% chance to chill. Silence happens for five seconds. Chill happens for four seconds. But, oh wait, it gets better, because this thing can be skilled up. This, I'd recommend you guys taking it at least to level 4. Level 5, again, if you guys want to maximize the damage output. But for utility purposes, level 4 is just fine. 25% chance to silence the target, and 25% chance to chill the target for 6 seconds. Absolutely insane, guys. Just, basically, if you guys judge, just, I mean, this, it doesn't really work out this way. But, in theory... With just four snow foxes, you have a 100% chance to blind, I mean, sorry, to silence and chill the target. That is absolutely insane. Leader skill into the defense, not the greatest. And I guess she can be useful. I mean, she's not bad in the striker position, but again, like, there are so many better striker units out there. She will just, she has, she's pretty low, but if you want to use her on a striker position, right, the only place I would use her is Wyvernish and arena and in both situations she would be she would be in the core three not the tracker position so you guys can run it in a striker position because that's a pretty reliable chance to chill and silence but again it's not the best so let's go over to heroes really quick talk about um how i have orbed them up so this right here is my mashia uh the rock one Maybe we should do the scissor one first, right? Because we did her first. So she's at 46% crit rate. Um, not the highest attack, but again, you really want to maximize crit rate and you really want to maximize cooldown. So if I look at her details, her cooldown is... Where's the cooldown at? Cooldown is only at 36%, but I run her with uh, Jun, and that's honestly pretty good. Like... Reason why it's on such a low cooldown and it still works is because when you hit, when you crit the target, they will bleed for 15 seconds, guys. And if you just have anybody to reduce cooldowns by even just a little bit, by the time the bleed ends, this skill should be up. So cooldown isn't the most important. I would say aim for 30%. I mean, ideally, guys, to have the best one, go for 40% crit rate and 60% cooldown. But if you just want her to function well... Make sure you have somebody else that can reduce cooldowns, like Chrono or Carlota or the Scissor Griffin or Rock Jun. And then pair her up with them. Make sure she has at least 30% critical rate and 30% um, cooldown. That should work. But these are her orbs. Not the best. Could be a lot better. Could be, could be a lot better. Like this right here could be 
could be so much more better. I don't know why this is a whatever. Um, HP, HP, defense, HP. Again, she was not maximized for damage. She's just here for the bleeds. All right, so I just got uh, crests with crit rate and cooldown reductions on her. I kind of slapped them on without anything. Uh, she has a title. She has Afterlife Walker, which I bet gives her the 10% uh, critical rate that she so needs. Next up, let's look at the Rock Mashia. Now, she, I would recommend you guys to have on at least 50% skill cooldown reduction. Mine is at 60%, 61 actually, but 50% should be good enough. Status activation, mine's at 20%, and honestly, 20% is really all you actually need to deal because mine also has a lot of defense, right? Mind you guys, she has a lot of defense and she has over 20% critical rate. So she's also there for the damage because the snow wolves, all snow foxes do quite a bit of damage. Status activation 20%. So each time you have a 45% with each wolf to chill and silence. So you guys really don't need any more. However, for units like these, Ideally, the best thing that you guys can have is 60% cooldown reduction and 40% status activation. That would be ideal. That would be amazing. Let's go head over to the Codex. Let's talk about the two Gunters. So, Paper Gunter, I'll just tell you guys how to orb him because mine isn't orbed up. Simply because Paper Gunter is mainly known for um, his second skill, which is increasing the critical rate. And this goes up to 30% increase in critical rate, right? Well, Rock Arcana will boost critical rate by 60%. Sure, there is no critical damage increase, but the fact that you just boosted critical rate by 30% more than Gunter, a lot of people will always use her. And she gives you a protective shield. Doesn't really take damage, but you're immune to all debuffs. So that's why a lot of people don't use Paper Gunter at the moment. Um, but still good for damage output he's still better than rock arcana because he has that 80 percent increase in critical damage at max skill um if you guys have nobody else to crit then go ahead i actually use him quite a bit when it comes to giants because his first ability can land shock and every time you crit with your second ability you'll reduce cooldowns by five seconds at max um this guy i would orb up with concentration and grit try to get 60 percent cooldown reduction uh, 30% critical rate, and as high attack as you guys can. And this skill, guys, is actually pretty darn good. because It, it, it also uh, cleanses you. It actually removes two debuffs. 80% chance, but it still removes two debuffs. Leader skill will increase the crit rate of paper heroes by 10%, which is absolutely fantastic. Kind of, if you guys, you know, like, I, again, I would say try to get into 30 40% crit rate, but if you guys can only get up to 20% crit rate, run him as a leader, and you guys have... 30% critical rate on your Gunter. Striker position, I would never really use him on the striker position. That was a really short and brief uh, a brief look at Paper Gunter, but honestly, guys, there's nothing much to him. Like, buffs critical rate, great for damage output, but right now, he's severely outshined by Rock, Musk, uh, Rock, Rock Arcana. Next up, we have Scissor Gunter, who was actually ignored for the longest time like i pulled him he was one of my first three units my first three natural five stars were uh rock arcana rock francisca and scissor gunter and i used scissor gunter a lot because his first ability would snipe everything it was so 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 amazing um what i would say guys is that snipe is possibly the move possibly the highest hitting move in the game especially when it comes to Destro. And this is why he kind of got revived by the entire community. Everybody in the plus 10 uses him in Destro because of his first skill. Second skill, not the not not like something super great. It will ban recovery at a critical hit, 40% chance to knock back. Second skill, you can use it twice. First skill though, second skill, you can use it three times. Skills off of attack gives incredible damage. And every time you crit the enemy, you will lower the cooldown of snipe by 10 seconds. Then you will increase your attack power by 5% every time you crit. So best way to go with him, guys, is to give him at least 30% critical rate and then to run him with Arcana or um, or Gunter or anybody else that boosts crit rate. Pros or people in the top, top, um, top 10 
probably don't have him on a high crit- critical rate because they all run him with Arcana. All right, they all run him with Arcana, so critical rate isn't the highest uh, priority. They generally maximize critical damage. And on a video that we did um, like about a month or two ago, we noticed that when we have more critical damage, like we swapped out 12% attack for – we swapped out 6% attack for 12% critical damage, and we noticed that the critical damage actually helped us hit a lot harder or significantly harder than the attack. So, yeah, maximize critical damage on this guy. We'll look at him because he's ored up and glyphed up beautifully. Not the best, but decent. So, this skill gets a lot better because this skin goes on a 23% cooldown, and every time you crit, you reduce your cooldowns by 15 seconds. When you guys run this with anybody else to, to reduce cooldowns, he is never running out. All right, guys, I swear to God, he always has snipe ready. He's always ready to snipe that Destro boss. And when you start off, or when I start off on the Destro boss, I deal probably 300,000 or 200,000 damage a pop. Later on, that damage goes up to like a million, over a million damage, like 1.2 million, 1.3 million damage, because your increase in attack power that you get every time you crit is permanent. So that attack power by 8% stacks up, stacks up, stacks up. You hit it 10 times. That's an 80% increase in your attack power, guys. That's in- insane. Leader skill pairs up well with the second skill, which is going to re- increase the disabled duration by 20%, um, which is, you know, which is actually pretty good. This thing actually goes up to, no, it stays at 4 seconds. So, yeah, it pairs up well with his second ability, but his second ability is not really what people use him for. Striker position, I would never run him in the in the striker in the striker position, guys. It's a single target nuke, and if you don't crit, you're not gonna get cooldowns. Let's go ahead and check him out really, really quick in my um in my I hope I wasn't I hope I didn't have my hand on the volume button there. I hope that you guys could hear me this entire time. Wait, no, crap, I'm 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 at the codex. Heroes, alright, scissor gunter, where art thou? Okay, there he is. So He's at 31% critical rate, but with Arcana, that becomes a 91% critical rate, so he can almost crit every single time. Look at his stats really, really quick, guys. 0% skill crown reduction, and he still works like a freaking champ. Critical damage up to 248%, uh, critical rate at 31.5%, and his attack is at 2204. Nothing else needed. That's all you need. Get 30% critical rate. Try to get over 200 critical damage and try to get over 2,000 attack. That should easily help you guys hit hard. Of course, the more the better. Like, screw it. Go for 3,000 attack, uh, 300% critical damage. But if you guys just get to 2,000 attack and 200 critical damage with a decent amount of critical critical rate, you guys should be hitting pretty hard. These are his orbs. Uh, could Some of them could be a lot better. Make sure you guys build him on uh, Concentration and the the Glyphs. I mean, sorry, not the Glyphs. MMG, hello. Um, the Crests can be anything. Just make sure that they are maximizing the... Um, just make sure that they're maximizing the the subsets that you really, 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 really need. All right, guys, so that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, hope you guys learned something today. Again, uh, super happy that people are starting to ask me questions again. So again, if you guys have any questions, any questions at all, let me know in the comments section down below. If you guys want me to do a review on any specific units, any uh, testing that you guys want me to do, like taking the bullet for this week for Destiny Knights, let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys like my content, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Tonight, we should be seeing the global release going through. Tonight should be that the patch should be hitting tonight. So hashtag trust in devs. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, guys, Neon out.